great Pause. has spoken. Good morning. Welcome to the land of Boz with Jeff Bosley. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. I'm sitting here with my coffee, ready to talk your earballs out and uh, entertain you and educate you and hopefully um, bring you back the next time. I've got a lot of guests lined up for the next couple weeks. It's going to rock. So uh, let's do it. Okay, before we get into the main chunk of the show, I want to kind of touch on some housekeeping stuff and a couple uh, little just things that popped into my head today that I thought I'd pass on to you guys. Uh, number one, I want to first touch on um, how you can email me and contact me for this show. It's fans at jeffbosley.com. Uh, questions, concerns, comments, topics, uh, things you want to discuss, anything and everything to do with the show, feel free to email me there. Give me kind of a description of subject line so I can see what's going on and keep track, and uh, I will... Uh, read them and use them for the show. So it means the world to me if you do interact and communicate. Again, fans at jeffbosley.com. And then a uh, second little housekeeping thing I wanted to touch on was like how to Patreon. For those of you new to Patreon, you do not have to have the Patreon app. You can if you choose. I, I use Patreon as a consumer. Um, I follow a handful of podcasts via Patreon. And um, once you choose your patronage level, you can link, and there's a video I've posted in a couple places, uh, but it's within the posts on the Patreon uh, website, the patreon.com forward slash Jeff Bosley, where you can do it. It's a very simple copy paste into your um, podcast app, and then it syncs just like it did any other time with any other podcast. So uh, my email address had a Patreon, and then uh, because Patreon has its own little f uh, platform, you can communicate and kind of, there are threads under the posts and threads under the podcasts and there's tons of interaction there. Um, that's where a lot of my stuff will be housed. So uh, surf through there. I, I really truly foresee this being, it's been on, it's been going on for like five years or something like that. A lot of the major podcasters are there that don't already have, you know, 30 minutes worth of advertisers. Um, but it's, it's one of the few media sources that is, um, kind of the last ones to kind of establish this sort of uh, template. So it's a really cool uh, website, tons of um, ways to interact. There's live videos, uh, like anything and everything. It's kind of been consolidated here to interact with um, people producing content and then the people looking at the content. So, um, and then moving on away from all uh, housekeeping stuff, something I found interesting is I want to talk about superstitions. Uh, feel free to email me. Uh, what are your superstitions? Does anybody have any uh, little funny reveals about ones I have? Um, I double knot my right shoelace. Uh, come hell or high water, no matter what I'm wearing, that right shoelace will be knotted. Even if it's a pair of dress shoes that doesn't have a, an adequate amount of shoelace, I will find a way to double knot that. Excuse me, I, I'm monstering it up. I got two interviews today for the show. Got to get my energy. Um, and then I also have a weird thing with numbers. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen that Jim Carrey movie. I think it's actually called Numbers, and he's obsessed with the number 24 and how he sees it in everything. I'm that way with the number 21. Alarm clocks, the way I fuel my tank, and it doesn't have to be the number 21. It can be the reciprocal of 21, which would be 12. Or it can be anything that adds up to those two numbers. Or it's absurd. Uh, I dare anybody to try me and I'll probably find a way to make the numbers work out. And then I also have a backup number is the number 24. It's my best friend's number. And that way I can pretty much have any number work in my favor as far as a creepy superstition. And other than that, I have, you know, I kind of respect the black cats one. I, if I see a ladder, I don't walk under it. But my biggest one is that, uh, tying my right shoe, uh, tying a knot, double knotting at, that's an interesting one. I find that funny. And then somebody, lastly, before we get into the chunk of the show, somebody um, asked me on a picture. It was random. Like, I get some of the most random comments on pictures that are actually old. But somebody post posted a picture on when was the last time I was in a fight. Um, not one involved in the military. Um, actually, this was still in the military. Um, this is the one that popped into my mind. It's not the last time I had a fight, but it's a good story. Um, it, it was kind of like the hangover. I woke up the next day, and sadly, alcohol had been consumed. All I remember is my ribs were really sore, um, and there were two bodies, they were alive, on the beach next to me in my uh, Tampa. Um, apparently, these two guys 
were being inappropriate to some girl who, to my memory, don't remember who it is. And it wasn't like her and I had hooked up. It was just, I felt like the need to defend this complete stranger at this bar. And I, apparently I had, um, a few words to say with them. And the next thing I know, I apparently won based on the way our bodies were laying on the beach. Uh, but I do remember my ribs were hurting really bad. And, um, uh, but I did defend her honor. So I don't even know if it was a good fight. <laughs> so that answers that question. Um, we will now get moving on into the rest of the show. I hope everybody's enjoying it. It's going to be a good one. Um, I love the holidays coming up and then, uh, my guest, uh, Peyton, um, her and I have a great uh, rapport and a great fun history, and she's very entertaining. So enjoy, and we are moving on. Okie dokie, moving on to what is slowly becoming one of my favorite parts of the show, where we learn a little bit of our history and uh, see if there's an explanation as to why we are the way we are. Extra, extra, read all about it, life story of Playboy Penny, extra, extra. All right, let's get down to it. For uh, today, October 4th, on this day in history, I never knew this. In 1981, um, there were claims that a Russian agent had been buried in the in place of Lee Harvey Oswald's place. Um, it, his body was then exhumed to confirm it was him. Um, obviously, if you don't know that Lee, Lee Harvey was the gentleman that shot and killed U.S. President John F. Kennedy in 1963, you need to pay more attention in history class. Uh, and also uh, on this day, 1970, Janis Joplin. I don't know. I mean, I know who she is and what she was, but it, she was a little out of my time. Um, definitely known for her time in Woodstock. Um, a, uh, I would say a very pivotal and influential uh, female musician of the time. Uh, she died today in 1970. And then also this same day, ironically, in two separate years, 1957 and 1959, uh, 1959, the first pictures of the far side of the moon uh, were uh given to us um, by the Soviets um, and um, then uh, two years prior actually was the beginning of the space age and then the Soviets launched their first man light satellite Sputnik 1. Um, I have a very odd and interesting history with the uh, NASA space program because I was obsessed in grade school. Uh, any research paper or any paper I had to write I always did on NASA and for some reason it was a love-hate relationship because back in those days you know, you had the Dewey Decimal System in the card catalog. Mother of Pete, it was painstakingly miserable. But a much simpler time. Um, and then moving on, 1959, Dennis the Menace started on CBS. And then two years prior, Leave it to Beaver started on CBS. So shows about little uh, boys and their little uh, mischievous things that happened throughout the day. And moving on to birthdays. Nothing too dramatic. Um, Armand Desante. If you don't know who he is, he's an American actor. Uh, he has a much better dramatic history, but for some reason I will always remember him in uh, the movie with Sylvester Stallone, Judge Dredd. Uh, he uh, acted his ass off in that movie. And then also on this day, 1946, this woman was born. Now I've one thing to say, and that's damn it, Janet, I love you. That's right. If you said Susan Sarandon, you are correct. On this day, she was born. And then also, ironic, this is something I really find uh, intimately <laughs> to, to have impacted me in high school. Anne Rice was born on this day, 1941. If you don't know who that is, she's an author of the, it was a movie called uh, with Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt, uh, Interview the Vampire, but that's based on a very large universe of novels um, called the uh, Vampire Chronicles, I believe. Um, and uh, for some reason, I was addicted to those books. And I don't know why. I might have had a little odd... I don't know. I don't know. But I, I read every book ever. I've got her autograph. I want to visit New Orleans just because of these books. Uh, I read the hell out of them. Um, for whatever reason, they weren't all the sparkly vampire crap that we're used to seeing nowadays. It, they were gruesome and they were really cool because there's a lot of history to them. Like they went back in time or uh, not time travel, but they started way back in the beginning of like God. And so it was kind of a cool, they were really cool storyline. So I uh, watched, I read that crap out of me, some Anne, uh, some Anne Rice books. Also on this day, 
This man was born 1923. Ah, they blew it up. God damn you to hell. That's my best Charlton Heston. 1923, Charlton Heston was born on this day. Um, and also, uh, if you're an NRA life member like myself, I may have just lost fans. Uh, he also was a five-term president of the NRA. And that's pretty much it, unless you want to go clear back to 1289, Louis the Tenth was born on this day, so pfft, whatever. Uh, yeah, let's see, anything else, some deaths, uh, that's about it. So I appreciate you listening to everything that happened in history today. The nerd segment has pretty much become synonymous with all things media. If I happen to watch a movie, read a book, see a podcast... Uh, or I do actually want to debate DC versus Marvel, Marvel, or any other such topic, Star Wars, etc. Uh, today, see what I think about VHS two. Nerd! Yes, there was a VHS two, meaning there is a VHS number one. For those of you who don't remember it, um, I actually don't remember it either. Uh, I thought I liked it. I don't remember it. But as a poor media reviewer, I did not do my homework and look at the first one. It's been so long since it came out. I do believe the sequel is completely disjointed and unrelated to the first one. I'm 99.9% sure. Basically, VHS 2, it took like I honestly took about halfway through the movie to see what they were doing. They have a main, they had a main, it was a found footage film. As always, those are, for some reason, I'm on that kick this week. But they had a main plot of some characters. I'm trying to keep the spoiler free, but yeah, I'll do my best. Um, yeah, so they had a main plot with some characters that had to get into a room, and then they started watching footage, i.e. they were, so we were watching them via found footage, watch them watch found footage. Yeah, so that's like three le levels of Inception already. And then... The th that was the through line, you would think. Uh, then as they're watching these found footage, uh, you can think of them as chapters within the main book. Each one of these were completely unrelated. And basically, if you want to watch a bunch of found footage things that are just interesting takes on the found footage movie phenomenon, check out VHS 2 because it... it it has some really entertaining uh, takes on found footage and some interesting little horror chapters within a main movie. And it has some straight up gross and uncomfortable found footage stuff. And then it gives you a nice little bow at the end that makes you slightly uncomfortable and uh, makes you go, oh, okay, now I remember. What I did is I was watching it over the course of several nights, which was a bad move because it's so disjointed if you don't watch it all in one setting that you, I actually had to go back and start over a couple chapters to figure out what the crap was going on. I thought I fell asleep and missed something, and actually I didn't. So um, it was, <laughs> if you like found footage and you'll watch horror, any horror movie at least once, definitely watch VHS 2. You won't necessarily be disappointed, but also don't go in there with high expectations. I don't want to give you any spoilers, but it's interesting. I thought it was, an, it was a good movie, but, you know. And then I also, on, in the nerd talk, I want to talk about music. Um, not so too deep into it. It'll definitely be a discussion for a later time. But a lot of, uh, it has been in the past where people ask me where I have my music or playlists. And with things like Spotify now, we can actually have playlists and kind of see what's going on. And um, believe it or not, I have a very uh, diverse music taste. Um, anything from Rob Zombie to... Um, Sonata number 14, piano, whatever that one is, basic, classical music. I don't really like rap. That's probably the one thing I don't like. Uh, but I do create playlists because for some reason, especially my workout playlists of, you know, some people have asked for what they are and I, I, I'll post it online and it'll, they'll love it and it'll jack them up for the workout. So if you just go to Spotify and then do a search for Jeff Bosley, a couple podcasts will come up. But if you scroll down to the playlist section, I think I have like six to ten playlists. Um, and I'm, I'm very explicit on how I name them so they're easy to find me. Um, but yeah, check out Spotify and feel free here on email me fans at jeffbosley.com. And we can do music chat. Um, I'd love to kind of see all these segments progress with your guys' input. And with that, feel free to email me and we'll go from there and uh, evolve and grow. But uh, yeah, I definitely, I have very set thematic music. I'll, I'll even have music in there like 
Limp Biscuit, um, the Mission Impossible theme is in my heavy is my workout playlist is in my workout playlist, which it's not a good song, but a lot of my stuff are are kind of a, a memory based music. I remember when that came out, how I was it would jack me up. So I it brings me back to that time where I was super jacked to go work out and excited. So it's kind of a nostalgia effect versus the actual song itself. So forgive me, especially if you get to the superhero one. Forgive me on that one. Don't judge. You'll see definitely like, holy crap, this dude listens to the Back to the Future to work out. But it has kind of a, a, an effect on like, like a, has, has a superhero feeling to it. So some of that orchestral stuff will make you go, so one second I got Rob Zombie, then the next second I got um, John Williams. I don't get it. So check it out. Enjoy it. Uh, be a proud nerd and uh, represent us well. This has been Nerd Talk. <laughs> Next up, I chat with friends, and as always, there is no rhyme or reason, but I am very certain the friends I have and I've made and sustained are some of the most unique individuals you've ever met. Uh, Today's friend is Peyton. Her and I have an interesting history we'll get into, and um, if anything, she is definitely a fellow nerd. You do not judge a book by a cover because she will Fight you to the death about some Star Wars topics, and at the same time, she's a beautiful human being, a huge person into fitness, and everything in between. So, get ready for this. All right, like I said, everything with my friends, there's no rhyme or reason. It's completely sporadic. And today's friend is Peyton, um, whom I met by insulting her favorite cowboy or her favorite football team, making her think I was the biggest dick in the gym. Not in a good way. (laughs) And fast forward, here we are, uh, two oddly connected forever best friends. Good morning or afternoon. Oh, I can speak now. (laughs) You may speak, woman. Leave your cave and speak to the fans. I was about to say, so I have to get permission from a man to speak. Oh. That's, how the, that's how things are going now. Wow, here we go. We're not even 30 <laughs> seconds into it, and it's already down that path. So did I, I got it right, though. That That's how you we met was like I somehow, I if I remember right, I sent you a, a DM on Instagram making fun of the Cowboys. And it was meant to be sarcastic, but it was one of those texts that failed. Like when my mom texts me, she doesn't understand text comes out wrong. And I think I came out very, very wrong where you were like, oh, he uh-uh, he did not just have talked about my cowboys that way. Yeah, no, pretty much. I remember being like, well, you're a douche. Yeah. So blocked. Yeah, she blocked. Yeah, I think you came up to me. Like, we were at Gold Venice. I think you came up to me. You're just like, so I'm the one that sent you that message. I'm like, oh, so you're the one I want to punch in the face. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I, uh, I, I have a way with the ladies. <laughs> They're like, oh, he's just a big dumb animal. That's cute. <laughs> I, I love that, that that you said I thought you were the biggest dick because, uh, oh, well, hey now. <laughs> Someone is full of themselves. Yeah, I well, okay, I meant okay, biggest a hole. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that's one of those phrases that can be taken two different ways. <laughs> oh yes, especially knowing me. Yeah. I'll probably make it into something it probably shouldn't be, but oh well. So I said in the intro, and it was it will it'll be slightly bashful inducing, but um, it was before you uh, the intro before I actually got you on the phone is I said you're one of those people you don't judge a book by its cover because you're this beautiful person that will rip your soul out if they offend Star Wars the wrong way. So you're like this inner nerd disguised by like this person of beauty. We're like oh like this person looks so sweet and kind, and you're like you did not just say that about Kylo Ren. <laughs> especially as of late and the way things have gone just like anybody that mentions oh, the last should I uh, even even saying the words I feel like I'm kind of like he that shall not be named in Harry Potter like no one should acknowledge the last Jedi ever as a movie because it's Terrible. Well, I did. That's the thing is, I did watch your review on the Last Jedi, and I, I was honestly before I hit play, I was like. Peyton, this might determine Peyton and I's friendship. If she if she like supports this this movie, her and I might not be able to be friends. And when like five seconds in your your review, you it was painfully obvious that you did not support the Last Jedi. I was like, ah, oh, good, we're still friends. Yeah, no, I, I mean, granted, I, I will. Someone, I, I mean, I have my YouTube channel, obviously, that I mean, I'll be like, well, I'm not gonna do it. I'm 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 g
what's up? Check me out. No, um, I was going to make sure you got it. Trust me. Shameless plug. Sorry. I always make sure the ladies on my show get shamelessly plugged. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. What? Yay. Oh, God. But no, um, sorry if you hear trucks right now. I love how the one time has been quiet until now. <laughs> I, I apologize. Did, I, right did I call you to truck stop? What's going on? <laughs> Um, <laughs> Gotta pay bills somehow. I, I mean, exactly. And there's always, you know, another truck come by every five minutes, so it's consistent work. I will say that. <laughs> I always say uh, in Hollywood, you know, I have knee pads. We'll travel. Oh God. <laughs> well, you have some knee pads, right? From the good old days, I can borrow some from you, right? <laughs> so I got promoted in the military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's what I thought. So. All right, back on track. Yeah. <laughs> Talk nerdy That's with me. Track. Sorry. This uh, is what uh, the the Je- um, return of not return of the Jedi. I don't want to. That's the best one. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't want to blasphemy the original good one, um, God, the last Jedi. Jedi. Yeah, no, just yeah, that's what launched my whole YouTube thing. And like, I did a live yesterday with a friend of mine, and people are like, "Oh, don't forget your roots." Like, you started off with the last Jedi. I'm like, "Yeah, I may have started off by reviewing that, but it's like I branched out." But just because. I've gotten so sick and tired of everyone. Just like, that's all they talk about is the hatred of Star Wars and Kathleen Kennedy. And she's fired, but she's not. She just signed <laughs> up for three years. And it's like, everyone's just pandering and clickbaiting. And it's just full of crap that they're all just making rumors of. I'm like, guys, let's just remember the good things, which is four through six. One, two, and three don't seem so bad right now. So it's just like, why are we still harping on, like, the hatred? Like, look, I hate it. I'm never going to watch it ever again. I hide it every time I'm in Target. I put other movies in front of The Last Jedi because I want their sales to go down. But okay, well, I was going to say, I was going to say, you should put one of my, like, C-level movies in front of it. Really make them grab my Steven Seagal movie. And they'll be like, oh, God, Last Jedi yeah, isn't... Yeah, are in Target. You, have you really reached that level yet? Heck, yeah. Well... I, I'm Target level, but that, I don't know. It would make it would make Jedi look great, though. It would make Jedi look like a... Or Last Jedi, a damned Oscar-winning movie. <laughs> Most likely, compared to you, yes. You're like, what, the clearance spin? Oh, I didn't even made it to the clear. So riddle me this. Now, and I'm t- playing devil's advocate because at the end of the day, I inherently, adamantly agree with probably n- everything you say about it. Would you say, because uh, we have an age difference, but you st- you you have an old Star Wars soul. So you like you you already referenced 4, 5, and 6 as, you know, like the, the J- Star Wars biblical Old Testament that can't ever be changed. Oh, yes. Do you think the prequels and then the latest trio or duo is trilogy God, uh, get together you call yourself a nerd wait no yeah because i've i, I don't want to know the new ones because they're so painful oh, i know would you say is it because there's two arguments you always hear the argument about well it's because of course you're gonna be more in favor of your og ones from when you were a kid and you fell in love and it was like the first time you saw it or do you think like this is more what i think is They've commercialized the hell out of it. Like, I heard rumors they put those damn little fuzzballs in Last Jedi only because they knew the toy sales would be huge. Well, actually, the main, actually, the real reason why they put the porgs in is because where they were filming on Skellig, uh, Michael Oh, yeah, Island, the penguins. Island, yeah, they're the little puppets. And so there's so many of them that they couldn't, kept, like, they kept, they can't, like, keep editing them all out. So they just put porgs over them instead. Uh, I, I don't know if that makes it better or worse or no well, different. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, granted, like, that's the thing, though, now, like, which is just so disheartening with Star Wars. It's, they know that no matter what, yeah. people are going to pay to go see these movies. I mean, granted, I will say that they're, apparently they've said that their merchandise and, like, sales have gone way down compared to, you know, the hmm. original trilogy and also prequels. Because it's like, yeah, they've been sucking. But it's like, no matter what, you, you can give us the crappiest known <laughs> film, obviously The Last Jedi. But it's like, you, seriously, the Christmas special, like, way back in the day, like, now. The oh, Christmas God, the Christmas special. special. Yeah, you didn't, have you seen that? Oh, God, yes. I remember, like, I, yeah. I've watched it recently. Man, you can just see Harrison Ford's contempt in that fi- in that show. He's not yeah. happy to be there. Well, I know, but, like, that looks so much better than The Last Jedi. Yeah. So it's just, like, that's why like, I think, like, I just, it's so sad because you can see it. And you, saw, you see it in 7, you saw it in 8, you saw it especially in, in Solo, Star Wars stories. Star Wars is becoming, Batman. like, the battered wife syndrome. Like, we will always go back and, and, and accidentally fall on that door handle because because he loves me. Well, well that's, man, man, that's a touchy subject that you just compared to. But, yes, that is true. <laughs> well, no, it's, just, it's like they just give us crap, and yet we still take it because it's Star Wars. Like, they don't, it's like they don't put any more integrity into it. They don't put any more, like, thought or, like, let's actually write a decent story. 
storyline that people can follow because no matter what, you slap a Star Wars sticker on it, sticker on it, and it's like, all right, people will buy it. I didn't, and I'm I was Han Solo more Halloweens than I can count, and I had the blaster, like the OG blaster, before they brought it back and all that crap. And didn't you buy the Velvet Disneyland when you and I went, but then it broke? Yeah, no yeah, no, you actually bought that as a gift. Broke. Yeah, that's, that's story. <laughs> no, it just broke because I used it. Like I put it on and it broke. And you used it how? How did you use this belt? You do describe to <laughs> I just, I just blanked. <laughs> I just completely blanked. You're like, wait. The amount of wait, things I could wait. say and think. No, wait, like man. I think you bought it for me as a gift. No, I think you bought it for me as a gift before that, and then we took, oh, we right. went to take it back, and I. I don't even remember. Oh, I meant to bring it back that day, and I forgot. And also on oh, that yeah, day, my right. Oakleys were lost and stolen. So that day was a really weird washout. But, like, oh, yeah. massive, massive, massive Han Solo fan. So I honestly, step one, I cried when Mr. Harrison Ford, spoiler, died. I still can't watch. I haven't gone to see Solo because I can't besmirch the the memory that is original Han Solo. I can't put myself okay. through it. You're, you're, honestly, you're not missing anything. I know, really but I need, and again, that's what's funny, is we are the heroin addicts of Star Wars. That only proves, like, I want to see it. I, I need to see it. I don't want to see it, but I need to, because I need a Star Wars fix. And like you said, no and matter how bad it is, fix. we're part of the problem. No, we really are. And like, a lot of people, <laughs> that's the thing, people keep saying, like, boycott Star Wars. And it's like, in a way, that's not really going to do anything. Oh, it's hell like, no. I have, to go, like, I have to go see the movies, because I have to review them, but it's like, it's honestly like every like it's still gonna be made because it's I mean look at they're having Star Wars land in, yeah. at Disneyland like next next spring or summer or whatever. Oh yeah. It is. Yeah. Well but, that's the thing is Peyton and I are both in the film industry, we do are doing our best and at the end of the day, like the one thing I think a lot of people I try to expose this without ruining movies for people, is at the end of the day, like all the way down to the casting director who gives actors jobs, everybody's career and the amount of food they can put on their on their family's table is it's on the line. So it yeah. really comes down to like, you know, like the people always say like, well, why don't you ever see new actors or why hasn't Jeff be this or why hasn't Peyton gotten this is because at the end, not be, there's other issues, but when they want guarantees, they don't want to risk. They don't want new, you know, everything is scary and everybody's lives and survival is on the line. And yeah. star Wars is a fact, like it will make money. Right. And, and it there, you know, the risk is, is, they're just like, nope, like you said, there's no, they're like, no, we'll just do it. We'll just keep doing it. We'll keep doing it. There's a guaranteed, you put that Star Wars thing and yeah, like Star Wars land again, you, you are a Disney fanatic. Every oh, yeah. time I walk by that closed section going to Toontown or uh, I, I, I am giddy with the, I've watched the making of like aerial footage on mm-hmm. like the Disney Facebook page more times than I can count just going, oh my God, I can't believe they're going to have the, uh, you know, an ATAT and all this crap over there. And of course, because of us, they're gonna keep on trucking. <laughs> yeah, because people are still paying for it. And also, apparently, I don't know if it's hundred percent true, but there has been talks that actually in the actual Cantina Lounge, they will actually serve alcohol. As if some people don't know, like obviously Disneyland does not serve alcohol; only California Adventure yeah. does. But the Disney, but the Star Wars Land actual like Cantina Lounge is supposed to be serving hard alcohol. We'll probably have to. <laughs> and I'm like, you can't have a cantina and then just serve like Virgin Mary. Well, it'll be the old, the there. parents that are sad that the old Star marriage. Wars doesn't exist, and then the kids that are driving them crazy. Alcohol probably needs to be consumed by you know all all responsible adults just to survive the day. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm like, I honestly, I'm like, I don't know why they limit it to just California Adventure. I'm like, do you do you does, like does it, Disney? They're all about making money. I mean, I just yeah. went this past last. This Friday with someone and we were looking up like how much does Disneyland make in a day but and all we got was like over all six parks in one day they make I think it said 1.3 billion dollars a day <laughs> Jesus. a day so that's a day but that I think that was gross not obviously what this but you use the word B as in boy as in billion as in billion as in bloody bloody billion oh my god but <laughs> more money i'm like you should have hard alcohol in disneyland because then the parents will get drunk from watching their kids and spend more money on the kids foods and kids toys and other stuff that they shouldn't have bought so i'm like really though it's kind of a smart move yeah but i wonder if it's like just a purely marketing thing where at the marketing at the marketing level they're just like no disney is like has a purity childish yeah. yeah, like, I mean, they're pumping in the cotton candy smell. Uh, if they start pumping in Jack Daniels smell into, like, Frontierland. <laughs> oh, God, that'd be awesome. That'd be actually awesome. I want to copyright yeah, that. Like that's specific alcohol per, like, liquor. Yeah. Like, I'm like, 
land. That like, would yeah, be brilliant. Like rum oh, over like near. Land. Yeah. Yeah. The, oh man, we're onto something. Hey, <laughs> hey Bob Iger, listen up, man. We have great ideas for you. Yeah, for the all the alcoholics who go to Disneyland. Oh my God, I know. How could you imagine that'd be a crap show? Crap, I am missing. Now I'm all jonesing for Disneyland. God dang Do you it. Do you still have your pass? No, it expired. Those are expensive. Responsibilities. I know. Uh, I, I well, I'll not eat for a Disney pass. It's my dang dog that can't, you know, provide for herself. Yeah, no, seriously. That's the thing with our pets. Like, we pay their rent, we buy them dinner. Yep. Like, they're so lucky. Yeah. Every time I think of the 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 obstacles, I'm like, wow. Imagine being a parent. <laughs> like, yeah, I know, right? I know. I guess um, I try not to. I I choose my audience wisely when I'm bitching about paying for like Izzy's food and care. I'm like, oh yeah, I don't have humans. <laughs> yeah, no, it, no, it is very true. I mean, like, I, I see my brother and sister-in-law, they have two kids that they didn't plan for, and, you know, they're definitely struggling, and it's a hard life, and I'm just like, I don't know how they do it. I mean, I'm never having kids, but props to, props to people that can. It's, it's not easy. <laughs> no kids in your future? What? Heck no. <laughs> Heck no. Again, no offense to people have kids. My best friend has two kids. She's a single mom. I don't know how she does it either. Like, it blows my mind, but... Yeah. yeah just just furry kids in my future no no human miniatures <laughs> now <laughs> now i actually have to bring up the fact this is random i know but i'm obsessed with the fact you haven't seen this because i'm looking at your messages on my other screen here the words i'll read it's funny because most people read like text messages in order i'm going to read it backwards and let people okay. understand how sad i am by this fact so peyton's last message nope never seen it from snatch what the actual f israel Two minutes Turkish, ready when you are. <laughs> you've you've never seen Snatch. That that sounds. I'm sorry, that sounds silly. That's that why silly. I was very explicit in the text message to put the little parenthesis or um uh whatever, not quotes, but to, it, to in, indicate, it's indicate that it's a title exactly. Okay, the movie Snatch. You've never seen that. I. I no, who's in it? Brad Pitt, Jason Statham before <gasps> J. Yeah. My husband. What? It's Jason wait. Statham before Jason Statham was Jason Statham. It's when he was straight up Cockney fun. Um, it's it's like right after locking. Um, what's his favorite movie? Uh, two um, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. It's like right after that, and it's like one of those movies where Brad Pitt, you know, because despite my jealousy of Brad Pitt being loved by all women, he's actually a goddamn good fun actor. And in he's Snatch. The best actor. In, yeah, in Snatch, he plays a gypsy who you can't understand a word he says. Like, I, I implore you as homework, you must watch Snatch or invite well, me over to watch it for you. Like, you need to see this movie. Do y'all hear that? Jeff's trying to invite himself over. Do y'all hear that? Do y'all get that? Desperate and sad. Desperate How and sad. How are you, Jeff? How <laughs> are you? <laughs> well, it was more of a accountability thing. Don't get all, don't get cocky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, you well, need. Anything, to, I, I can't believe you haven't seen that. Then I will watch. What? I can't believe you haven't seen that yet. Yeah, that's like a very uh, quotable line from. Once you see it, you'll get it. Obviously, but the two minutes Turkish is is like a little cult cult quote from that movie. As a result. Yeah, um, I quote The Office regularly. That, that's, <laughs> that's my quote for the time. I like how like my stapler and snatch are in the same conversation. <laughs> Well, they got. Oh, I'm thinking of um, Office Space. Office Space. Wow. I don't like Office. I don't like The Office. I couldn't get into it. I've given it so Crunch many. Over. I've given it so many tries. I really. It's over. <laughs> it's over. Our friendship's over. Everything's over. I'm done. I'm I, done. I, I just hear the phone hang up. Like I get its humor, but for some reason, it it doesn't sustain me like enough to watch an entire episode frequently. I. Do you not love as a child. <laughs> Have you not experienced love in your life? Has no one made you laugh or happy? But that's what's weird is it's totally up my my alley of humor. Like that's because it has the same talk to the camera, weird silliness as like Parks and Rec, which I loved. But I, know, I love Parks and Rec too. So how can you not like The Office? I, that's that's why I'm saying is I office. can't. That's why I'm saying I can't justify it. I don't know. I think honestly it comes down to like jaded bitterness because John Krasinski went from nerd to like Mr. Action Hero, and so I'm like, oh, oh no. pooey. Have you, seen, have you seen Jack Ryan? No, for that same reason. Oh my god, it's so okay. Seriously, no, and I know, so good. I know. I've even heard that from like real people, like real military former CIA I'm, I'm dudes. Say, I'm not real people. What am I? No, like real, real girl? <laughs> like 
because there's a difference between like audience and people that have done it. And I actually have a CIA friend that has said that he goes, God dang it. It's actually good. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't want to hear that. Well, yes, I know. Would you have been good in the role too? Yes. But it's like, it, it is John Krasinski. Oh, for sure. He has the name obviously, but like, Oh know, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I don't think I'm like entitled to it, but like just as a gel, it's kind of like if you grew up playing volleyball or basketball or soccer, or whatever sport, when you see another person doing it, you're just automatically jealous. Not because I thought, well, I, yeah. So it's just like a weird jealousy. So like I've actually lost a taste for movies I want to be in as a result. So like I start watching all these chick flicks and all this stuff I'll never get jobs in because at least I can watch them and still enjoy them. But when yeah. I start watching action movies, I'm all like, oh, boo hoo. So You're like, I wish I could be doing yeah. That. So you think you based on my like watching, like if you go to my Netflix watching history, you automatically go, is this guy like, is this like a gay dude going through a breakup? Why is he watching all this? Or like, did his girlfriend hack his Netflix? Exactly. Like, why is a teenage girl on just Netflix account? What's going on here? <laughs> it's not that pathetic. Well, no, I, I also think if you ever muster up the courage to watch it, like, I mean, it's very hard for me since I do watch The Office. I watch it when I wake up. I watch it like when I'm driving. Well, I listen to it while I'm driving. <laughs> I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I have it playing like on my speakers because it's connected through my USB, and then I like fall asleep to it. And, like, I. Like, I love, live, and breathe The Office. If they did a reboot, I want to be the female Michael Scott. Like, good God. But I had no idea. What? I had no idea you were such an Office fanatic. Good God. Like, no, I'm, like, legit obsessed. Like, the person's house I'm over at right now, like, they always get, hand me a tablet before I go to bed. Like, here's The Office. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> People treat you like a kid when you throw a tantrum, they hand you an iPad and turn on The Office. Well, no, I'm going to bed. They know I can't sleep without, like, The Office playing or, like, actual sound. So. That's what makes me laugh is that's what parents do to bad kids. <laughs> like, well, here's well, an iPad, watch. I wasn't, I mean, I grant you I was a really good kid. But as I've gotten older, you know, it's kind of gone downhill. I can't, wow. Okay, I'll give it another try. I, there's some, I don't I know really what. Think you should. There's something about it that just I don't I don't know what it is. Like I even like went to the British version to like cleanse my palate, and that yeah, did. I like the British version that much. That like didn't help. US. Yeah, that didn't yeah. help at all. But I've rewatched like Parks and Rec the entire series probably at least three oh. times just from like being. Okay. But yeah, Office. I don't get it. Well, actually, Parks and Rec. I mean, I'll watch it in the beginning, but then I'll skip to Andy and April's like uh, fancy party because I like one. You are totally April. How have I not ever connected that? I was about to say, everyone calls me April Lovegate. Oh my god! Dude! You're April! <laughs> no crap! I wow! I'm gonna rewatch this now. Like, it's a whole new set of eyes. Like, anybody like, I'm that. Peyton. Yeah, anybody that watches the or, um, uh, Parks and Rec, Peyton is April Lovegate. Oh, I'm. <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm that, speechless that, and confused. That could be my new soundbite is that when April says, like, I hate people, it's like, I love animals. They should be rewarded for not being people. Oh, my God. You have the same, like, voice and attitude. They must have hacked into your life when they created that character. There's no I know, way. seriously. Like, she's so dead inside. I'm just like, this she's so dead to, Like, you know, deep down, deep down, like, when she cares about somebody, she cares about them. But for to sure. everyone else, like, you made April an assistant to everyone. Do you know who April hates? Everyone. Like, <laughs> Seriously, that is me. Oh my god. Except that the last name Swanson, so it gets confusing, but whatever. That's yeah, Ron Swanson. <laughs> That's why a lot of people when they're like, What are you doing? I'm like, I'm Peyton Swanson, I do what I want. <laughs> Ron Swanson <laughs> is is a man I strive to be. Oh my god. You're very Ron Swanson esque. That's why I find it even more funny is our our relationship as as if you look at Ron and April's relationship. Yeah, they're always <laughs> looking out for each other. Yeah. You know? Like whenever he goes, if you're always, always just thinking when he, whenever she does something to get like a, keep a person out of his office, he goes, good girl. <laughs> and it's not derogatory. It's like, it's honorable. Yeah, yeah. He says it like in an honorable way, like, like this weird primal way. It's awesome. Now I got to go watch that too. God you're, dang you're just digging the hole even deeper, man. I know. Sorry. Well, okay. Riddle me this. So you like Harry Potter, don't you? I love Harry Potter. What is your question? I... <laughs> No, I uh, I've never seen it out of a weird act of defiance. So I guess apparently, that's on my list. You've never seen a single Harry Potter. That's why I don't watch them. Is just to like enjoy that reaction from people. Not a single one. I bought a Kadabra, you. See, and that's the. <laughs> I went with to uh, the Harry Potter uh, part of Universal with my sister and her kid, 
and we went on some roller coaster and then like some okay this is you're gonna be was it, was it busby's roller coaster or was it inside like it wasn't the, the weird platform? three-dimensional one it was the one that actually actually moved or it wasn't like the virtual one it's it was the, the one that actually the, moved the one that's right across from the castle that has busby in, in his nest Yes, and that thing like bowed, and my sister like bowed to some animatronic. It's Buffy. That, and I go, "What are you doing?" She goes, "You're supposed to bow," and I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, yeah. He's a hippogriff. Like you have to bow to the hippogriff. That so thing. Bow back, then you can approach them. Get it together, man. <laughs> I'm about to like take you back to Universal, and I tell you everything. Like, I have no uh-huh. words. I have no words right now. <laughs> Because you and my sister had the exact same rant that that you just did for the last 15 seconds was the same thing when we were in the middle of the roller coaster and she bowed and I go, what are you doing? She goes, she said what you just said. Like I, like I should have known. I didn't do my homework before I got on a ride at Universal. (laughs) I did not. I mean, I like, that's the best part of Universal, honestly, it's Harry Potter World, even though the photos of what I've seen down in Orlando look so much better. Oh, hell yeah. Like, what? No? No, I agree. The Orlando oh, yeah, one's astonishing. Green Dot, like, which you probably don't know, it's the Wizard's Bank. <laughs> um, but they have, like, the dragon on top of the bank and, like, all the extra shops. I'm like, why, why don't we have that here? Yeah, you're thinking, like, the epicenter of of film. Uh, we would have. Like, granted, there's a lot of it was made in, you know, London, but it's, like, yeah, it's but... the holy grail of when it comes to filming in Los yeah. Angeles. Why don't we have the better version yeah. of things? Well, there's a thing, Granted, I think. Because we have less space, because Florida is probably. Yeah, because nobody. Nobody everyone, wants to live there. Yeah, and everyone <laughs> lives within like like a pinky of each other here. Well, have you heard? There's a guy actually I met on or follow via Patreon. He um he has a guest on that talks about like theme parks. And there's I want to say there's actually a theme park in Dubai where it's it's a Warner Brothers theme park, like everything to do with Warner. Bro- yeah, and it's all like indoors because it's Dubai. Because and they've like created this dome. And it's lo- it's authorized by WB. It's not some like some knockoff. So there's like there's they're building a Gotham and a Metropolis. Oh. Yeah, it's and I'm like obviously their only audience is the ultra rich because it's not like people in Dubai hang out on Goth you know have any interest in Gotham City. I do. Well, I that's my still. that's yeah. my point is for us to get there to Dubai. It's not exactly uh, you know a bus ticket. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly a hop and a skip over. Yeah, but no. can you imagine actually hanging out in Gotham? Like it, it's like Star Wars land, but for DC and Warner Brothers. Like I think they're actually cool. doing a like, if I remember right, they are actually doing like a like a Who Frame Roger Rabbit, like whatever the city that was based in, or like a fictional um, version of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'd be cool. Well, it's also like they're making you know in California Adventure right now they have the Guardians of the Galaxy breakout, which replaced Tower of Terror. Yeah. But they're now getting, getting rid of a lot of Bugs Land and then expanding to make Marvel Land. Oh God, that's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm so excited because if you if you go to like I again like I went last Friday. Yeah, I was jealous. They have, they, what? I was jealous. Uh, and I'm going again on Monday for my dad's birthday. Uh, <laughs> but they have like they have like the walls up that is said Bugs Life, but then there's a wall next to it that says Stark Industry. <gasps> yeah, so it's like they're like I said they're ripping out pretty much all of Bugs Land to make. Marvel Land. That's so funny. And I think they're still in talks to acquire land behind Guardians, uh, behind the Guardians breakout to get more for Marvel Land. Isn't that a parking lot behind Guardian, the Guardians ride? Oh yeah, they're probably going to be, I'm not like I said, they're expanding. Oh god, yeah, of course we don't need parking, but we'll sure as hell take a ride. Well no, they're making another uh, structure by the Mickey's and Friends structure where it used to just be one like solid lot, now they're actually making another structure. Okay, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it's so know. funny because this is an old man moment, but like if you ever go on, I know actually because of you, you introduced me to the Disney uh, like um, Facebook group. <laughs> oh yeah, the fans, the pass holders. Holy yeah, crap, intense. They um a video was floating around like from the original like footage of introducing like the Disney commercial, the Disneyland commercial, and I remember the parking lot that was right outside the gates. Like that's when my parents took me was the parking lot that you would walk down the column and then you'd be at the gates that we go into now today. Oh, yeah, like a thousand years ago? Hey, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Barney and Fred and I would hung out at Disneyland all the time. I never watched Barney. I was too cool. <laughs> Sorry. This is why it's lucky. This is why I didn't want to meet in person, because one of us would be walking with bruises and slap marks. <laughs> uh, you, you talking about hitting me, son? <laughs> hey, I'm all about, like, equal rights. You hit me, I hit you. Um, I'm, I'm about to pull on Joker with a pencil and disappear kind of on you right now. 
<laughs> nice, nice reference. Thank you. Oh, okay. Speaking of that, Peyton's uh, talk nerdy with me thoughts on Joaquin Phoenix and the Joker thing. Oh my! I honestly, I feel like Joaquin Phoenix has gone so far off the rails lately that <laughs> he is the perfect amount of crazy to portray the Joker. No one is gonna be as good as he, as he, he Ledger. He is. The end all be all, the best of the best Joker. But if you look at all the footage, it looks like he's almost doing a Heath Ledger version. Like he doesn't. Well, you know, kind of, yeah. But I like what, for what the footage I've seen, it. I like that it looks like it's showing him as this like man who's just breaking down and crumbling and just slowly going insane to become the Joker. I actually hope it is a legit transitioning to Joker, not just an origin, but then cutting it off to make it too. Yeah. Who knows? But I, I think, honestly, I think he's, you know, a good cast for it. Now, do you think, now here, my theory, and I argue this, is as much as I want to see the origin story, with bad guys and, like, main bad guys in movies, it's, I, to me, the unknown is almost more interesting. Like, to where the yeah. Joker shouldn't have a stand, that'd be, that's kind of why I like having a standalone Darth Vader, i.e. the two, three movies, didn't work in my opinion so i was like no i i don't want to know where he came from i just want to know he's the bad guy you know like it kind of the mist of the mystery helps for me well yeah you know kind of like you, you don't know their background and what made them come to be the way they are yeah. but i i feel like if it's done the right way then it can lend itself to be very interesting and like holy crap like no wonder the joker went excuse my language that shit crazy oh for sure because <laughs> of x y and z and i think for what they're showing it just for what the few clips that they've shown, I'm like, I, I'm like, oh god, this just looks so good. Well, it, okay, there's, I'm gonna bastardize this joke. Do you know who the uh, comedian Patton Oswalt is? Yes, uh, I, yeah, I know him. Oh, um, <laughs> he tweeted me once. <laughs> he tweeted you once? Yeah, or replied, I should say. Um, one of his jokes uh, you may have already heard is like he talks about how he, if he goes back in time and meets George Lucas before he made the the sequ- the prequels. And how he'd be talking to George Lucas and he'd be like, oh, do you like Boba Fett and all these things? And and, and Pat Oswalt would be all, like, all excited. He's like, well, I'm going to show a picture of him sad, but I'm going to do most of the movie based on his dad. And he's like, I don't care about his dad. What are you talking about? And he goes like on that cycle for a while. And then finally Pat Oswalt goes, I don't care where the things I love come from. I just care about the things I love. And that's why he's like just talking about wiping out the three prequels because he's like, I just don't care about what the history is of them. So... Oh, see, like, I- I agree, but disagree. I mean, again, Anakin, I, episode one, I mean, it wasn't terrible now compared to episode eight. <laughs> and, like, they're more, they're more, like, I can stomach them better. I mean, I like episode one for mainly Darth Maul, and I love Ray Park, met him. Oh, my God, the nicest person you will ever meet in your entire life. Can you imagine that um, dude's career was made out of playing a bad guy for three quarters of a movie and then dying? I know, but he's like, yeah, he managed to, yeah, like you said, just, like, totally make that take off. For and, sure. Like, keep it like what was that it came out 1999 19 years later but god damn we're old, you're old. <laughs> whoa i'm less old but you're old i like how thank you i'm i'm old you're less old that's cute yes i just like kind of like your dust i'm just like at the like dirt level <laughs> like one i'm the fully I'm evaporated old. uh peter parker you're the one that's still hugging hugging Did you know that, that was improv oh yeah because he didn't know he was gonna die in- well, well, no, dude, well, no. I think that uh, Tom Holland knew he was gonna die, but he's also just like you know, like the whole snap disappear, like everyone else. But him grabbing on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I you're right. I do remember reading that. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, holy crap, that was beautifully done. Yeah, like, I mentioned all- I mentioned this earlier, and the funny thing is, is, he had to do that in a weird, like you know, tight suit and everything. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, I remember I've watched when I first moved. I just kind of did my little obligatory hole up in my home for the week thing. I probably watched Infinity War nightly. Like it, it was depra- It was a, it was a, embarrassing. But- I've only watched it two times now because it's just like it is so hard to like to watch that. I mean, granted, we all know they ain't dead. Like you can't kill Black Panther. He needs a franchise. You can't kill <laughs> Spider Man. He needs a franchise. Like, come on, you're not gonna kill all the- Bucky. You cannot kill Bucky. Yeah, he becomes Captain America. What? Yeah, that's a super deep cut nerd level. Like in the comics, he actually takes the helm of Captain America when Captain America dies, if I remember correctly. But I'm pretty. Well, Chris Evans is over Captain America. Oh yeah, so. that poor I bastard. Think... <laughs> well, yeah, like at the same time, though, like, hey, what, the, what, like, what that? Okay, what that? You as an actor, like, 
here you've been given this iconic role, this incredible role that yeah. you honestly, like, I mean, he's not in an age that it's, like, you're getting older. Like, he still looks young. He still fits the role. Yeah. So it's, like, but he's, like, so done with it. Like, for sure. I, for you as an actor, do you see, like, is that legit a thing? Or? Well, that's the thing is, like, you think about, like, there's two two sides of the coin. He's obviously got, he, he can pay his bills. So he can do whatever yes. he wants. So there's the first side of like when he first started, he'd probably be like, I'll buy, I'll sign a five picture deal. I don't care about creative interest in artists, you know, artists, the, the love of the art. He's like, I'll five picture deal with Marvel. I'm in, but you know, then he gets to the point where he might not just be satisfied. You know, it might not be satisfying him to be slightly hippie ish. It might not be satisfying him create creatively. You know, I mean, you, I, I can't fathom that, but at the same time, it's kind of hard. I can't fathom saying, no, I don't want to play a comic book hero anymore. <laughs> like, you know, that's what blows my mind. I'm like, if I was offered to be in a Mar- I, I don't know about DC. DC, I'm not the biggest fan of. Hmm. But it's like, if I was offered, like, a, a new, like, Marvel female, like, role. Yeah. I'm like, I would, I would hold on to that and cling to that until they're like, all right, Peyton, you officially hit the age that you can't portray this anymore. <laughs> but then, then they flip, and then go on the flip side. That'd be like telling a painter you can only paint this. You like that? Who loves painting and creating from scratch? Okay, you can only paint this one thing for the next ten years. Like it probably loses its satisfaction. So and I mean, but, but also okay, with that note, but what about like soap actors? Like people in General Hospital have been on that for thirty years. Paycheck. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's a paycheck, but... Back like, that truck like, up. I, I'm not trying to say it's, it's a laziness, but it's, like, kind of, like, not how, I guess it is kind of how easy it is that you've already developed and, like, latched onto this character and made this character yeah. like, part of you and who you are, that... How, like, how fun and, like, nice might that be, like, to just go into work every day knowing you've got this, not to be nervous, like... For sure. That you're just, basically, it feels like almost like you're playing yourself, kind of, but For just, sure. you know, in a Captain America suit or, like, me, I don't know, and whoever they would have left suit. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, it's the great debate, but yeah, I mean, for me, because uh, we're both in our early careers, part of it's I don't want to say I'm driven by a paycheck, but because just like anything, I mean, the thing is, I think with acting and the art world of film and all that, people forget at the end of the day, it's still a job. You know, fortunately, I like my job. My dad's a doctor; he likes his job. But my dad didn't volunteer to be a doctor. I don't want to volunteer to be an actor. But when actors get so far in their career, they kind of they can act, I think they can almost make more pure choices because they're not worried about taking care of their family, putting food on their table, well, yeah. paying for their Lamborghini or whatever. Um, I, would never, I would never in a million years ever buy one of those. Well, I wouldn't fit in one. <laughs> that, that is probably true. That's very true. So I don't know. But yeah, I think because he hasn't, I mean, speaking just Evans and specifically, it's here's the other catch is now I don't care almost every one of those people in Marvel – they're not done in a in a negative way, but they're done. Like they're Tony, um, what's his but RDJ will always be Iron Man. Chris Evans, oh, yeah. they they can never do another movie without instantly being compared to that original the Marvel stuff. Like RDJ almost wiped out his past cinema based on his his Iron Man performance. Like it's like, wait, was he in a movie ever before these? You know. Well, no, I mean, like, he, like with, with Roger Downey Jr., you know, he kind of, he went off the rails, you know, like, he kind of yeah. was very lucky to have a resurgence, the yeah. Iron Man role, because, yeah, he kind of rebranded himself, and he was given a second chance. I mean, like, him and Tropic Thunder was just absolutely, like, incredible. Brilliant. A br- yeah, like, a brilliant performance. So, it's like, <laughs> I feel like he may be more grateful for his role, because it gave him his second chance. Hell, second yeah. Start. Yeah. Yeah. But if you think about any of the other characters in any of the Marvel movies... They're kind of, and I, like, I, here's the thing is, like, I have a man crush on Chris Evans and Captain America. Like, so I'm completely biased. Oh, totally biased. Well, same with Thor. I'm totally the same thing. But they're always kind of, they're kind of, I don't want, because they're not typecast per se, but they're, they've kind of forever created a foundation of who they're going to be known as. You know, yeah. so, like, that's the thing is, I know Chris Evans, what was it, after the first Avengers, he did um, uh, Snowpiercer or some stuff. You know, you huh? can't. I think it was called Snowpiercer. I don't know. Something they filmed in Korea. But like five seconds into the movie, you're like, yeah, that's Chris Evans from Captain America. Yeah, that's still Chris Evans from Captain America. <laughs> like, well, no, some people sadly do get forever typecast like in that role, kind of like Mark Hamill. Like he was Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Or, you know, like that, yeah. Perfect example. Like, he can never, yeah. you know, until he started doing that voiceover Joker stuff, he, 
And I, but oddly enough, he was always forever, and it probably, I don't want to say it hurt his career per se, but he didn't obviously have as many movies as Harrison Ford, which is... Yeah, Harrison Ford, like, he was able, he was, I think he was lucky to have had... Yeah, for sure. ...franchises around the same time, because then it didn't latch him to that one role, one yeah, mindset, for like, sure. oh, I'm looking, at Her- I'm looking at Han Solo, no, yeah. wait, I'm looking at Indiana Jones, no, wait, I'm looking at this person, like, he's been able to kind of, like, have just a variation of different yeah. roles, but he's kind of... Well, as the same, about to say he plays the same guy, but he doesn't. He just he just plays yeah, any character so well. Well, then here's one of the things that I'll, I'll always say, and I never know which uh, if I'm taking my own medicine or not, is, like, do you want to work or do you want to not work? You know, like, if you think about Mel Gibson when he first started his career, pretty much the same roles all the time. And then until he made it big, did he say a huge F you to everybody and say, I'm going to make a movie about Jesus and I'm going to do an Aramaic? Like, if he did that in the 80s when his career first started, he'd be done for. Yeah, done. Oh, yeah. So, he's like, done. you know, you can't, it's almost like, well, do you fault, at the end of the day, like, if my dad, again, I always go to the metaphor of a, a quote-unquote normal job, like, my dad wants to be a doctor. If he wants to actually work as a doctor, if he was in some podunk place in Nebraska and never treating a patient, he probably wouldn't feel satisfied. So, even though hey, The Rock does the same thing all the time, he's still working. Uh, Tom Cruise is always true. Tom Cruise, uh, you know. Uh, like he did Magnolia. Like my thing is like with Tom Cruise. Every once in a while he'll do a thing. I'm like, oh okay, I'll be damned. Like for me, Magnolia was that movie. But at the end of the day, he's he's enjoying himself doing Mission Impossible because that's what he freaking loves. You know. So uh, do you want to work or do you want to be unemployed? <laughs> well, you know, I mean that is true. But it's like also like Tom Cruise. Like he's made more than enough money that he doesn't really have to work. And I'm sorry he shouldn't anymore because the mom you're fucking stupid and awful. Sorry for my language. No, it's fine. No, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, uh, yeah, and that's obviously a whole nother, uh, conversation, you know, because he does take work away from stunt people. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that, well, that too, but also it's just kind of like, dude, it, it, with all the Mission Impossible, it's like, it's after a while, it's like, it's Did you tough. see Fallout? No, I haven't. Give it a chance. I'll, I could be wrong, but I was, I've seen it twice because I'm like, I'm like, all right, Tom, you got me. It was, it was very cliche edge of my seat the whole movie. I was like, all right. And I have kind of a man crush on Henry Cavill, so that helped too. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, see, I love Henry, Henry Cavill since Count of Monte Cristo. That, okay, played. then you need to see Fallout. That dude, like the meme going around where Henry Cavill actually, like somebody added a, a sound of a gun cocking when he jacks his fists before a fight. Like, I, I might need to send it to you, but there's a scene in Fallout that became a meme or a, a gif or jif or however you want to say it. Yeah. Where, like, right before he's fighting, he throws his coat off, and, like, the way his sleeves are kind of stuck on his elbows, he kind of has to, like, cock his shoulders a little bit, and it looks all badass. And somebody added, like, the sound of a gun going, <laughs> to Henry Cavill, oh, like, cocking his guns and doing this old British brawler, like, you know, and he's got that British mustache, and you need to see it. I sound like I want to go on a date with him. You kind of do sound like it, but I don't blame you because he, he's one right? good looking man. And it, ju- and, it, and, it, and it almost works away the sad, painful CGI mustache work they did in Justice League. It makes you go, okay, I'll forgive him because Fallout was ac- him and Fallout was actually pretty good. You know, Justice League wasn't my fave, so not gonna lie. <sighs> that was an abortion of a movie. And I'm, D- I'm, pro- I'm pro DC. And I, 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 I can't. Interesting. <sighs> I just, it, it yeah. And that made me sad. <laughs> I watched it. It's kind of like when people say they can't pick their favorite kid when they have kids. It's kind of like that. It's like, well, I really like DC. If they're falling off a bridge, I would, I'd go save them, but I wouldn't really want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, DC, I feel kind of bad that they are being constantly compared and kept at the level of Marvel, which I feel like Marvel just like captured something so incredible. Yeah. Well, and they've been incepting it for 10 plus years where DC tried to do 10 years of work in two movies. Yeah. It's, yeah. It just, it definitely, I feel bad that they always like fall flat. Like it's just, I I don't know. Maybe yeah, Marvel maybe just has more interesting characters than DC. Like, and people will probably be like, Oh my God, no Batman, Superman, forever. Yeah. DC has two. Let's be honest. I, no, they, have, no, they do have great characters. I feel like Marvel. But I think they just have two up. main. Like, I mean, really, yeah, I don't know. Batman, Superman. I mean, granted, them, you have Aquaman, Wonder Woman. Oh, Wonder Aquaman! Woman. Oh, Aquaman! So. I'm so excited. For, oh, Jason Momoa, he can get it. Yeah, and that's what'll get it money. But like, at the end of the day, if somebody told me when I was a kid this guy's gonna have a movie, I'll be like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, might as well give that's Hawkeye. Like, might as well give Hawkeye his own movie at this point. <laughs> For real, I know, seriously. Like, what's your power? I, I can shoot a gun and a bow and arrow. 
but you know, I know that's kind of, it's, it's very sad. But <laughs> with Aquaman, though, like, I'm not, I don't know if I'm allowed to really talk crap, but like, I'm not a fan of Amber Heard, man, and I'm not really excited for her to be in this film. I don't think she's that great of an actress. Yeah, we'll see. I'm, I sadly feel like that was miscast for all the things. You'll be, distar- you'll be distracted by Mr. Sexy Momoa. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Call Drogo, man, forever. God, yeah, you got me addicted to you and another dude. Uh, dude at my gym got me. It took me like three seasons to muscle through Game of Thrones, but I finally got into it. Now I'm, I can't wait. They took me and another dude to get you into it. What? Hell yeah! I didn't stutter. <laughs> <laughs> well, well the fact that I took you into like this other dude, I'm like, interesting. It takes yeah. I don't. I'm not a pushover. It takes two. Well, hey, you know what? On that note, this has been extensively long and entertaining, yeah, but for the sake of ending on a high note, um, yes. preach your, uh, you know, like you said, preach yourself out, your website and all the stuff that is you. So, uh, Can you shamelessly plug myself, YouTube, Talk Nerdy, with me, Instagram, Peyton.Swanson, Twitter, Swanson underscore Peyton. Oh, pal. <laughs> I did... <laughs> I, on that note, I, I uh, what is it on Family Guy where he's a, he where he goes Will Wheaton? No, no, Wheaton's are Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Why are you they doing went, it? Why are you making that sound? I did that what? the other day on a video where I did Whey protein, and only like two people got the joke. Oh my god, I do that all the time. Like, have a little shot of whiskey. Exactly. Like, wait, wait, what? And I'm like, you don't know. Perfect. You don't know what I'm talking about. I knew you would get it. Uh, so. Course. Seriously, and I did not. This isn't the thing to say. Uh, as embarrassed as it was for Peyton for me to tell Peyton this, and it made her embarrassed. Watch talking nerdy with me. You will be thoroughly. Oh, yeah, I know. You'll be thoroughly entertained because it's she's not. You know, a six hundred pound keyboard warrior in his mom's basement going. You know, I want to talk about DC versus Marvel. Um, let me go get some graham crackers for my mother real quick. It's she's. No, it's she'll have the same. Man. You'll still have the same topic and dialogue, but it's not that guy. <laughs> No, yeah, Peyton, Peyton is easier on the eyes, I won't lie. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, that's why I could only do an audio podcast, because I couldn't look you in the eyes while we were doing this. Because <laughs> that would have been a much shorter podcast. Yeah, I'm like, I gotta go, I'm awkward. Uh, go Cowboys. I, I, don't, I don't know what to do with my hands. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, okay, I'm out. <laughs> now, on that note, we will say yeah. goodbye and thank you, Peyton. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. <laughs> And as you can see, Peyton uh, is one of my closest long-term friends here in Los Angeles. Um, she, I love her to death. She's amazing. Um, it's great to have her on the show. And as a result, as you can imagine, we spoke for almost 45 minutes. So the show is as long as usual, but with less segments. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please, please, please email me. Uh, interact with me, fans, at jeffbosley.com. Interact with me at patreon.com forward slash jeffbosley. Uh, you can interact with the show specifically, or there's actually a community tab there. And I, like I said, you do not have to have a Patreon app. You can actually copy paste a, a patron specific link to your podcast app and just use your regular podcast app for the shows you subscribe to. So uh, with all that being said, please know I do not, um, <laughs> the support uh, you give me does not go unnoticed. Um, you, I am your employee essentially. And as such, I really want to do my best to have this being an enjoyable hour, whether you're stuck in traffic, working out, or whenever you take time to listen to this. Um, I'm doing this for you. I enjoy it. It's a blast. I have a blast doing it every day. It's a good stress. So I hope everybody else is enjoying it. Um, keep with me. Stay with me. Have a great day. I will be seeing you here tomorrow. And until then, uh, go forth, conquer, uh, kick ass, and be relentless. Adios. Adios.